It is my honor to introduce His Excellency, Ambassador Mohan Pires, President's Council, Ambassador and Permanent Representative of Sri Lanka to the United Nations in New York. Ambassador Mohan Pires was appointed as the Ambassador and Permanent Representative of Sri Lanka to the United Nations in January 2021. He has an illustrious career in the Sri Lankan judiciary as a law practitioner, diplomat, and academician over four decades. He was appointed the President's Council, Legal Advisor to the Ministry of Defense, Legal Consultant to the Central Bank, and Attorney General of Sri Lanka. During his tenure as Attorney General from 2008, he introduced substantial reforms in infrastructure, work ethics, work efficiency, and a new ethos to the prosecutorial attitudes. He also held the position of Senior Legal Advisor to the Cabinet Ministers in 2011 and was appointed Chief Justice of the Supreme Court in 2013. Ambassador Mohan Pires was also a visiting professor to many esteemed law colleges in India. During his education at the Sri Lanka Law College, he excelled in law studies. He is the winner of the prestigious Hector Jayawardene Memorial Gold Medal in the address to the jury competition in 1973. He was admitted as an attorney at law of the Supreme Court of Sri Lanka in June 1975. His Excellency was also admitted as a solicitor of the Supreme Court of England and Wales in 1978. It is my privilege to invite His Excellency, <clears throat> Ambassador Mohan Pires, President's Council, Ambassador and Permanent Rep of Sri Lanka to the UN in New York to deliver a special address to us. Uh, Namaskar. <clears throat> Uh, Srimathi uh, Rita Menon, uh, of the, the president of IVFA, and your co-host, uh, my good friend and Her Excellency Ambassador Ruchra Khamboj, the permanent representative in India, my diplomatic colleagues, distinguished speakers, and distinguished participants. I thank uh, IVFA. Uh, to the United for organizing this timely event on gender equality through financial independence, drawing inspiration from India's G20 presidency in 2023, uh, and the UN priority theme of the year, intertwining global policy commitments with actionable strategies for progress, propelling concrete actions in financial inclusions and economic empowerment of women and girls. Madam Chair, it is truly believed that liberty for a woman comes from the ability to make financial decisions for her life. That is not, as someone said, a, a high-tech solution. That is, uh, as uh, Reema Bint Bada, the Saudi ambassador in the US observed, he said that is not a high-tech solution, that is a low-tech solution for a low tech problem that has a very high impact. She also went on to say that it has also been said that economic equity is enormous empowerment of women, having jobs that provide income means that women can be more effective force, a more equal force in the political process. Women with income, it is said, take themselves more seriously and they are taken more seriously. Now that's a mouthful, isn't it? Madam Chair, as far back as in 1882, the Hunter Commission was appointed by the colonial government of India, if you look back in history, into to look into education. Uh, Pandita Ramabai Saraswati, if you recall, gave evidence before that commission. Ramabai's evidence created a great sensation and reached uh, the then Queen of England, uh, Queen Victoria. It brought fruit later in starting up the women's medical movement in India. So the story of the empowerment of women began to gain momentum to this day when you have taken over the baton, so to speak. So today, the development community 
has been trying to promote financial institu- inclusion, that is to connect almost 2 billion people who live completely outside the formal financial system to bank accounts and services like credit and insurance. Now, the problem is it has been too expensive to do so at, at any scale until recently uh, when mobile telephony has exponentially grown through which medium it is easier and cheaper today to reach the disadvantage with financial services. Now, the number of people with bank accounts has been a rapid growth, and we are starting to see the impact. In particular, uh, there is exciting new evidence that digital financial services like payments and savings do indeed help people lift themselves out, out of poverty. Now, India has been specially innovative, I must say, about investing in the building blocks of digital financial inclusion. The Aadhaar, a nationwide biometric identification system, makes it simpler today and more secure for marginalized to do business with banks. India's regulators have implemented implemented new rules that give financial institutions greater flexibility to provide a wider variety of services. Now, in a conversation between Rohini Pandey of Yale University and Melinda Gates, it was observed that women who received wages in their own accounts earned more and saved more. They said that the interesting thing was that they not only worked more in the government's workfare program, they also worked more in the private sector. They said that after the the intervention, when they asked the women to tell them of their occupation, they were more likely to say worker instead of housewife. Now that's uh, that's a huge increment, isn't it? So that suggests a story of empowerment. Having and using a bank account changed her sense of self and her ability to express her sense of self. So today, it has been accepted, Ma'am Chair, that without Dima, that achieving gender equality through financial independence can benefit individuals in society. However, the story is not that rosy. Financial independence can have unique implications for women and girls due to historical and systemic gender inequalities. Let me refer to some specific ways in which financial independence can impact girls differently. Now, if you look at economic empowerment, it allows them to have control over their own financial resources, make independent decisions, and pursue economic opportunities. Closing the gender gap, particularly the gender pay gap, women often face lower wages and earning disparities compared to men, even for the same work. So by advocating for equal pay, for equal work, and ensuring fair compensation, financial independence plays a vital role in reducing the gender pay gap. Then we have entrepreneurship and business. Women-owned businesses we see have the potential to contribute significantly to economic growth and job creation. Then we have access to financial services. In many parts of the world, women face barriers to access these services due to discriminatory practices, lack of documentation, and limited financial literacy. And when you look at investment in and, and, and in education skills, access to quality education and training equips women with the knowledge and skills needed to pursue meaningful careers and secure higher paying jobs. Then balancing work and caregiving responsibilities. Financial independence, again, we see women and girls who often shoulder disproportionate caregiving responsibilities. Achieving a balance between work and caregiving is essential, I say, to prevent women from being economically disadvantaged. Then, of course, finally, we have the protection from gender-based violence. Here, financial independence can also provide women and girls with greater protection against gender-based violence. So, my dear friends, if we, in addition, we believe that ensuring women's financial literacy is vital in promoting the financial independence and thereby overcoming gender-specific differences in financial independence. We have to admit the fact that deeply rooted gender specific stereotypes still exist today, which hinder the women from pursuing their career choices. In my own country, Sri Lanka has executed a number of programs targeting the financial empowerment of women. We especially target improving the 
the income generation of women in low income and female headed household families. Towards this endeavor, the Ministry of Women and Child and Social Empowerment has implemented programs to provide uh, economical support and technical knowledge to uh, make products that meet the market demand in the respective areas, especially targeting the women in urban and rural areas, women engaged in the fisheries industry, women in the plantation sector, women with disabilities, women who are, expect, who are waiting to uh, have jobs abroad, women who have lost their social sensitivity, sensitivity and so on. So most importantly, Sri Lanka has introduced microfinancing community banking systems as a measure of poverty alleviation. And what is important here is that the banking system is 70% of the members of this process are women. So now that's a huge increment. Madam Chair, let me conclude with a quote from the famous novel Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, which we have probably all read. Set in the background of Victorian England, the protagonist Jane Eyre is in search of self-reliance and independence in a society where the women are marginalized without wealth and status. Jane Eyre in her famous quote says, quote, I am no bird and no net ensnares me. I am a free human being with an independent will, close quotes. It is no secret, Madam Chair, that the issue Charlotte Bronte highlighted did exist and it continues to exist even today. My question to you, should we pass this to our future generations? That is the rhetorical question that I have to leave you uh, with to think about. Claire Booth Lucy, the American author and US ambassador, leaves us with a clue to the answer to that question when she said, quote, a woman's best protection is a little money of her own, close quotes. In more recent times, we have had Melinda Gates, the philanthropist, who endorsed that view when she said, quote, when money flows into the hands of women who have the authority to use it, everything changes for women, their families, and their communities. Think about it. I wish you and the CSW program every success in all your deliberations. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency for the knowledge and the deep insights that you've shared with the audience today. Thank you.